Hello everyone, this is Mirzai, and in this lesson we're going to talk about sampling distribution. This time we're going to look into sampling distribution of a difference in sample means. So, so this time suppose that you have two population. Now suppose that you repeat the sampling process from each of these population. Again, think about that your population one is uh, Kapali Pomona, and the second population is San Luis Obispo. So from this first school, you go ahead and take... Um, samples and every time you record a function over this sample it could be the average standard deviation or variance or the percentage of people who got a gpa greater than 3.0 or less than 3.0 so every time you look into some functions that has been calculated over the sample remember we call these functions as statistics now also i do the same thing from the second population i keep repeating the sampling process and every time record one or two specific function that is of my interest. In this example, we are specifically looking into sample averages. So suppose that you record the samples from each of these population every time you take a sample. And in the end, what you're interested in is not a single population distribution of average, because according to central limit theorem, we knew that the x bar is going to follow a normal distribution with mu and sigma over square root of n. But this time, we are interested in the distribution of the differences between these functions that we have calculated. In this example, specifically, we are looking into the difference between the averages of this um, observation that we have collected. For example, instead of looking at distribution of x1 bar or x2 bar, I want to look at the distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And in the end, after I calculate all these numbers, I put it on a histogram. And if I do so, I see that this is normally distributed, and its average is the average of first population minus second population, and standard deviation is sigma 1 squared divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 and the square root of this whole term, as it's shown on the screen. So this time we are interested in the distribution of a difference between sample averages. So in this case, this is the distribution that you're going to see. And we, uh, this is a very important observation because it allows you to use this characteristic for setting up confidence interval and hypothesis uh, testing later on. Now let's take a look at one example and see how we can use this definition. It says the effective life of a component used in jet turbine aircraft engine is a random variable with average of 5,000 hours and standard deviation of 40 hours. The distribution of effective life is fairly close to a normal distribution. The engine manufacturer introduces an improvement into the manufacturing process for this component that increases the average of life to 50, uh, 50 hours and decreases the standard deviation to 30 hours. Suppose that a random sample of 16 component is selected from the old process and a random sample of 25 component is selected from the improved process. It's asking you what is the probability that the difference in the two sample means is at least 25 hours. Assume that the old and improved processes can be regarded as independent populations. So this example is from the statistics textbook Montgomery and this is example 7-3, chapter 7, example number 3. So the very last statement in this example is very important because if we assume that these two populations are dependent, they cannot use the definition that we gave you in the previous example because then we have to use a pair t test for comparing the two population. So this is a very important assumption regarding this definition that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 follows a normal distribution deviation. So if you want to use that definition, you have to assume that two populations are independent. Now let's get back to the example. It says the first average is 5,000 and the sigma is 40 then the improvement causes that the mu goes to 50-50 and sigma becomes 30. So the example says that we take a sample of 16 from the old and 25 from the improved and we want to know what is the probability that x2 bar minus x bar 1 is greater than or equal to 25. Since uh, x bar 2 minus x bar 1 follows a normal distribution, to standardize it we have to deduct the value of the average and divide it by standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can standardize both sides of this inequality inside the probability 
term. So you're going to write x bar 2 minus x bar 1 minus its mu divided by its sigma. That gives you the z. You have to do the same calculation on the right hand side. So 25 minus mu 2 minus mu 1. And then you have to divide it by the standard deviation term. So if you do so, the term that you get on the left hand side is z. On the right hand side, you get negative 2.14. So basically, you're trying to find what is the probability that z is greater than negative 2.14. That, that is shown on the graph that what area you're looking for. And we know that the normal distribution is symmetric, so that area is exactly the same as the area before 2.14. So therefore, I can find what is the probability that z is less than 2.14, which is 0.9838. With this, our lesson has concluded. Please refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.